What does it take to be a CrossFit Games athlete? Athleticism? Skill? Hard work? All of those things. So what does it take to be a CrossFit Games champion? Sacrifice. A singular focus. A passion for the sport. What does it take to be a CrossFit Games Masters champion? All of those things and so much more. A gym community that has your back. A family that's there for every aspect of this journey. And most importantly, a partner who's there to guide and assist you throughout this journey. We bring you Rudy and Lynette Berger, a championship couple. How did you guys meet? Wow. <laughs> do you want me to go or do you want to go? Uh, yeah, you, you, you narrate it at the beginning. Okay, yeah. so we were students and interns for uh, Kimberly Clark. I had just gotten here from Puerto Rico um, back in 2003? 2003. 2003. Yeah. Yeah, I got a job offer and they said, do you mind relocating for this internship? And I'm like, no. They sent me to Nina, Wisconsin. I've never seen snow. It was January 10th, the yep. day I turned 19. Yep, So. Um, I knew enough English to pay a deposit to stay in this room at a co-op house they called it and show up unpack all my stuff lock the house in every window and every screen door <laughs> because you know crimes a little higher in Puerto Rico so um, get this phone call and I answered and it was like hey can you let us in and I'm like who is this and it was like Rudy I live here and I'm like boys live here Okay, so I came down, unlocked the door, and ran back upstairs. So you guys were forced to live together, basically, yeah, as interns. Yes, mm -hmm. and this was housing owned by the company that you were working for. An employee, An employee had a rental. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. So where where were you going to school? So I was going to school at Toledo in Ohio, and she was going to school in, in Maya West, which is in. Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and this internship was in you know Appleton Wisconsin so we both flew to Appleton or, or traveled to Appleton mm -hmm. to for a, this work experience it's supposed a five, to be five, five month period yeah. yeah so she opens the door was it was it love at first sight it, it was <laughs> I was too scared to make it like I was like I first of all I had no idea that boys were gonna be living in this house because my parents would have not been happy with that um, because mm -hmm. Rudy is more of a girl's name in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So I knew that there was going to be a Rudy there, but I did not expect to see this Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was, it was a little shocking. I, I come from a very, uh, a town, small town in Ohio that lacks diversity, is what I'll say. <laughs> and so being exposed to Lynette was, was different for me. And, and after a couple weeks... It, it, it didn't take long to realize there was chemistry for there. sure yeah yeah we started talking and we found out that we had a lot in common even though we had a yep. lot of trouble communicating <laughs> yeah yeah because um, that was the first time for Lynette to speak fully you know 24 hours a day in English yes and <laughs> and let's just say that Rudy's Spanish needed work yeah he uh, greeted me by saying ole, which actually <laughs> doesn't mean ola. Yeah, doesn't. <laughs> but I, he, I knew he thought you he were a bull. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so no, cool. but as soon as we started talking, it was it was instant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, at what point during the relationship did you know this is the one? This is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. I would say so. The internship was supposed to be five months, and towards the end of that period, we were like, you know, like we there's something here. Um, at the time, you know, back to the Olay comment, moving for him to move to Puerto Rico was just not really yeah. a good option at the time. So I was like, you know, what if like I finished school here and he went to Toledo, I applied and got admitted and I didn't even tell my parents until that was final because I knew that they were going to try to talk me out of it. Or maybe that was in my head, but I felt like if I let outside voices kind of have an opinion I, I might have changed my mind but I think we had something and, and that was enough for me to want to move here yeah. and we had that conversation like you realize I'm kind of moving here it's a big deal so if this yeah. is not serious like we need to know now but the rest of history I mean yeah. we, we've been you, together you went, since you went home for the summer told your parents you're going back <laughs> <laughs> and started in school in the fall and that's, and that's it yeah mm -hmm. So what, when did you propose and how did that go down? So let's see here. We met in 04. I proposed in, in 08, which yeah, was... 07. 07? Yeah, because we got married in 08. That's I proposed in 07 a couple months before she graduated college. Mm -hmm. And I did it in Puerto Rico. I asked permission from her dad, which there was a translation there, there and he thought I was going to go take her to get married that day, not just to, to, to get married. It was comical. Yes, <laughs> um, and and yeah, we you know it was uh, it was just the right moment. She's graduating college, and it's like okay, we're gonna spend the rest of our life together. And so yeah, mm -hmm. proposed in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. How intimidating was it to, to ask her father? Well, um, <laughs> it was intimidating twofold because it's her father, and I was trying to speak Spanish too, which is which was which was scary. And obviously, the translation came across. I'm gonna marry your daughter today, not. Yeah, so my dad, um, he, I think he was shocked, kind of, and before, before getting further into the story, my family adores Rudy. They treat him like he's a yeah. king, like they just love him. So my dad was like, I'm sure excited, but he was like, wait, why today? Like, don't we have to like throw a party this is like a big deal but at the same time he was like well I really like you so uh, I guess sure <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as because he proposed at the rainforest so he talked to my dad and then we left and I only knew that we were gonna leave part and my phone starts blowing up like my mom is calling me non-stop my aunts like every and I'm like what is going on but we have very bad reception at the rainforest so Luckily, they didn't blow the surprise. Yeah. But my dad went to like my mom, like, why are they doing this now? But then, you know, it was a translation thing. So test one, 1A and 1B, is the 1,000 meter row, 100 double unders, 20 shuttle runs, then 750, 75, 15, 500, 50, 10, 250, 25, 5, with a time cap of 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. More shuttles. <laughs> I, I am oh. done with shuttles, personally. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I would like something more interesting to film um, and to watch. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of counting shuttles or doubles, so double whammy for me on that one. Um, but for Rudy, you know... Uh, I like this time domain, you know, for a workout for him. Uh, we train machines a lot. So, in you know, as you know, he is pretty good on the rower. So it's one that you have to be aggressive because part A is 100 points. But you also need to remember that right after you're done, you don't get a break. You go straight onto a heavy barbell. And for us, it's extremely high percentage. So that that's gonna be that's gonna be a an interesting one. 
And so how, and, um, how long was the strategy for strategy meeting for this one? <laughs> this one was pretty quick. This one was like, well, you know, you're going to have to hurt in both. Um, no, like the, the part B is just, I, in his division, I mean, that 225 is, is high. And going back to the open where they ended with that barbell, um, I remember it wasn't really like a walk in the park. So we're going to have to be smart about how we approach that barbell and do our best to get a few reps on that. Okay. And then part B, um, we're, you're going to go into that, but it's only worth 50 points. Right. So does that play any role in the strategy? Not really. I mean, we want to do our best in all the tests. I mean, our goal is to get as many points as possible, no matter what the scale is. So we're going to go with all we got. jump rope at the end, but I'm just going to say it again, jump rope, jump rope. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, at least no cramps and screaming this time. No cramps, no cramps. <laughs> Just finished workout one of yes. semis. Yes. Um, so what was your plan going in? Plan was to go hard. It's it's a workout that I know it was going to be, I mean, with a 25-minute time cap, I think uh, you knew it was going to be long. And it was just, you got to kind of choose a pace on the row and hold it that's sustainable. And then, you know, doubles, doubles, at our level, we should be able to do all of those unbroken. I tripped a couple times, but that's hap that happens. We just keep going. Um, but yeah, the, the the strategy was just head down and work, and don't hold, don't lay don't hold up. Just keep going. Even even with the snatch at the end, you just go. You knew my next question. Okay. So you didn't save anything for the snatch. You I just didn't save anything for the snatch, and that's because. It was an A and a B, but the B was only 50 points. So most of that value is in that first workout, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You go out there, you did trip up a couple times on the double under. How do you just like push that aside? You know, like, so in training, we actually replicate that um, where when I'll throw me a different rope and say, hey, use this. And it's just kind of gets you ready to where it's like, all right, stop what you're doing, but then sharply focus to get prepared. It, or sharply focused to return to where you were and don't and don't let it fluster you. That's so, just, that comes come, that comes with experience. Absolutely. And then I also heard um, when I wasn't here for quarters, you cramped up on the shuttles, and you yes. had to make an adjustment kind of on the fly. The second, so what happened there? The second set of shuttles in the corners, my both my legs cramped up about 20 into the 50, and so I had to kind of shorten my stride and do almost like a shuffle, and just. There was no stopping. I mean, you had to finish, you have to put a score in. So I just kept pushing myself. It ended up not affecting me like a, a really big amount. It slowed me down and I kind of missed my goal. But I just pushed through and went across that finish line. If you've ever had Charlie horses, you know, it just stops you and it's funny. It, from a video reviewer perspective, they saw that, they actually hear me yelling at the end just because my feet cramped up so bad. So your 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 goal going in, I heard was seventeen forty. Yeah, and you beat that. Is, is coach allowed to? <laughs> this no, this won't air until after May tenth. Yes, I did beat my goal. Uh, coach Lynette and I um, really bust out a spreadsheet, figured <laughs> out our typical rep uh, time per rep of that workout, and we came up with seventeen forty, and I and I beat that. Yeah. Okay, and then on the snatches, did you have a goal on that? Yep, I got my goal. Nice. I, I hit three snatches. Uh, it was tricky because with only three minutes, 225, it's um, for a gentleman my age, you really shouldn't walk up to a 225 barbell and try to attempt it after 20 minutes of cardio. So I actually had two barbells to, to uh, warm up to that weight, and then once I got there, I was able to hit, hit it three times. So that was, my, that was my goal. And that last one was with not a lot of time on the clock. That was not a lot of time. I was a little behind pace, and so I was like, well, let's let's throw up a Hail Mary, see if it sticks, and, and yeah, I nailed it. And it stuck. <laughs> it, it stuck. So I know you've had a busy week, yes. and that's probably not atypical. No. Um, so atypical. what's it like to get here to the gym on a Friday night after a hectic week and just put your headphones in? warm up, loosen up, and know you get to like throw down? So, I mean, you think about it all week because they released the workouts on Monday. So we're playing over scenarios. We're doing a lot of visualizing the entire workout in my head. But then when I get to the gym on Friday, I know I, you know, ate all the meals I needed to eat when, you know, meal timing. I have my pre-drink. I put in my headphones and listen to my normal playlist. And honestly, like, I, I figuratively close all the tabs, that music's playing, and I get into a just a, a very calm mental state, but you know, calm before the storm is really how that, how that goes. And it's a, it's a fantastic feeling, because you just, it gets into a space that I'm there, I'm by myself, I can clear the mind and just get ready for competition. So how does it feel to get one out of the way? <laughs> it feels great. 25% done. Yeah. It feels very good. And, and it feels good to be in here, start to recover go home, get some, get some fuel, uh, mobilize, just, just recover for the morning. And then do you do a lot of mobilization tonight? I do. Yeah, I do a lot of rolling and, and just stretching and, and, you know, the Theragun, the, the Voodoo Floss, 
um, but, but mostly hydration. I, I just drink a ton of water, get electrolytes, and just that's you know just get the body refreshed for tomorrow. Some of your wedding okay. pictures are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Where where did this take place? Puerto Rico, uh, uh, a town in the north part of the island. Um, we had about thirty ish guests from the U.S. come yeah, down, friends and family, and a pretty small crowd from my mm-hmm. side. Yeah. And we were there for a week, um, first time of basically our, our extended family and friends meeting. Yeah. And a lot of them made it a vacation. So by the by the time the wedding came, everybody was like best friends with each other. It cool. So yeah. it was really cool because while communicating was an issue, not an issue, but like a challenge, um, everybody was already very comfortable with each other. So they were doing like hand gestures and pointing yeah. at things and speaking half Spanish, half English. So it was really a great time. And, and, you know, Lynette is a logistics master, and so she planned the whole week of activities for mm-hmm. everyone to, to, to see the island and do, you know, learn salsa dancing and mm-hmm. visit the Bacardi tour at the, yeah. the rum facility. And, and, mm-hmm. and it was it was a magical week. It was almost mm-hmm. like an Indian wedding you hear mm-hmm. that, that lasts a week. It was, mm-hmm. it, that's it what really it felt was, like. Yeah. It was fun. That's shocking. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, So you get married. I have kids. How did you get to Powell, Ohio? Yeah, so um, when we when she graduated college, we moved back to Wisconsin where we met and worked for Kimberly Clark for about four or five years. Um, and then Leah was born in Wisconsin, so she's a Wisconsin girl. Um, right after she was born, we moved to a, a manufacturing facility for Kimberly Clark for, you know, for promotional reasons in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So we were in Nina, Wisconsin, we moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then Mason was born in Oklahoma, and once we had two kids, we are like, oh, we are, we're not close to Puerto Rico, we're not close to Ohio, let's, let's move back somewhere, and so we started looking for jobs in Columbus, because we liked Columbus, Ohio, it's, you know, a great place, um, and found jobs, and that's why we're back here, mm-hmm. about 10 years ago, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you stopped having kids in a different state? Yes. Yep. We we yep. learned that two was good for us. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Rudy and Onet's children mean so much to them. And the kids are active participants in Rudy's journey. Here's footage of Leah climbing a rope to get the proper tape mark for Rudy's workout. Here is Mason cheering with his friends and sporting the big fat heads of Rudy. And it's all reciprocated. Here's Leah at a track meet and Rudy and Lynette cheering her on. Just like she does for her dad. Here are some pictures of Rudy and Mason working out in the garage. Here's Mason after a tremendous amount of O2s at the CrossFit Games, but still sporting that Rudy fathead. Family is everything to the burgers. It translates to everything they do, their gym community, the competition, how they live their lives. And then test two, um, probably the major strategy workout, and that is the choose your own adventure, as many muscle ups and thrusters as you can do in five minutes with a minimum work, work requirement of 15 reps each. Mm-hmm. 
So that one has taken the most conversation. And um, I won't even actually tell you how many hours we've been talking about it. But let's just say I went to work, I came back, and he was still like spreadsheeting about it. So um, <laughs> it's been a long conversation. But really, it comes down to knowing yourself. You know, how do you optimize your work time? How do you minimize your non-working time? And where are you willing to suffer the most? And so I, I, I offered my perspective from a coaching perspective, but I said, hey, it, it's going to be you for five minutes. So you're going to have to choose your adventure wisely. <laughs> um, and let's not forget, there's a tie break. So that also plays into how you attack the, the workout. The tie break is the time at which you compete or complete the minimum requirement for both movements. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, so how, how fast can you accrue 30 reps essentially? Okay. Do you have a lean? Uh, based on the type of athlete that he is, he pro we're leaning towards spending most of our effort on the bar. Okay. Versus the rings. Cool.
Well, that escalated quickly. What? That escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Good job. Let's get to the echo one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know what you meant. I didn't know, I, I didn't know my time. And I couldn't tell. I was trying to tell you. I was telling you time. I couldn't tell. I think next time when it's like that, we need one person saying I heard a lot of voices. So I couldn't tell what was left on the clock. I couldn't tell from. Well, I was trying to just like, I was, I was coming up to It would be like, probably the best is like just count that. Then, yeah, nine, but you were, you were off. Eight. Like, you were not like taking too much any kind of pressure. I know, but, and that's why it's critical to know the time. You know what I mean? I know, but you weren't like, you were kind of doing your own thing. I'm aware. Okay. The last 10 seconds. I, we weren't clear on the last 10 seconds. I want to talk about the dynamic between athlete and coach, husband and wife. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the workout, um, you you didn't know what the time was. Correct. You didn't know, and so you and you and Lynette had a discussion. Yes. How do you, as husband and wife, push that aside when you walk out the gym doors? <laughs> Let's see here. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that, it, it, and I'll answer your question and, and I'll tell you what the key to it is, is, is respect, mutual respect. To be able to communicate and say, hey, I don't like how you did this there, let's try this next time. Or, you know, hey, I didn't understand what, you know, how much time was on the clock. It was really loud and chaotic. Maybe next time we, you know, communicate a better plan ahead of time. And just, it, it, at the end of a workout, you're emotional because it's just, you know, emotions are flying but kind of comb that together and saying, all right, I'm going to be respectful, give feedback, and then kind of move on. And it's better to be heard and to, and to say and to listen and put it behind us. And then, like you said, walk out the door and uh, return to normal life. Um, because at the end of the day, you both want the same goal. Yes. Right? Yes. And so with that, an athlete and a coach have to communicate. Absolutely. Yep. And the husband and wife have to forget about the emotions. They do. They absolutely do, and, and, and because we're such, I think we have such a strong relationship, we're able to keep that separate. But it's not easy; it takes a lot of work to keep that to keep it separate. Yeah. So, and I noticed as the cool down was going on, the conversation became less emotional. Absolutely, <laughs> definitely. And, and you know, when we're training, we we don't really get too emotional because if you know, it's, it's always fun because she programs my my training and my workouts. And when I when we get done, if it if it just really kicked my butt, you know, I'll I'll keep my mouth shut <laughs> for five <laughs> minutes and cool down and relax, and then I'll give her feedback. And, and we, it's a much more productive conversation. And being together, like a lot. I mean, a lot of hours of the day we're together. You know, even when we're working, sometimes. We're literally backs are against each other at computers, you know, working through. So like, we're always together. So so if you don't keep that respect in the gym and outside of the gym, it, we wouldn't be able to do this. Exactly. So I'm going to give Lynette a chance to rebut the emotional athlete 
um, statements to the coach okay, and yes. how a married couple deals with that on the way home. Okay. So <laughs> we, we had the conversation earlier today. What was the reality today? So because we're very data driven, we went home and rewatched the video. <laughs> Yes. And he dropped the bar a little yeah. too soon, yep. which probably cost him one rep. But that's the purpose of continuously learning and continuously wanting to improve. Yep. So we're like, all right, how do we prevent that? And so we implemented that solution into this workout Today, and yeah. said, when in doubt, just keep working. We will tell you when the time is up. That way we can ensure that we're not leaving any work on the table. Yeah. But there was footage of me going like, hey. Yes. Have time. And, well, and, and, and I do want to address one more thing. <laughs> so, and this is her rebuttal, Rudy. So you have I, to be quiet for a second. Yes, yes. So, Rudy said that it's re mutual, mutual respect, and sometimes it's emotional, and he has to give you feedback. But in fairness, you have the right to give him feedback as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I let him give me the, the feedback first because emotions were high and he just worked so hard. So I put myself in his shoes and, I, and he was probably a lot nicer than I would have been if I was in his shoes. I probably would have said some Spanish words in there too. So I get it. Like it's nothing personal. But then I said, all right, at the end of the day, it's like stopping short of the finish line. You, you are the athlete and you have to be aware of either an audible or yeah. you just go and if the rep doesn't count, the rep doesn't count, but I'd rather you go over than under. Yeah. So. Cool. And at the end of the day, you go home and you love each other just as yeah. much as at the beginning yeah. of the day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe some apologies in the car ride home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but it's so great because we both want this just as much. We, we both want it just as much. She wants it as much as I do and that's what matters. So we, we come together in the end. So then you're just living life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, everything's good. You start CrossFit mm -hmm. at Chalk Dust CrossFit. Or yeah. Chalk Dust CrossFit. Yeah. Um, enjoying the community, everything. I know you vaguely told me the story of how Lynette told you it was time for you to push this to another level. Yes. I want, I want the story more complete. And I want to know, like, at what point did you think you could be good at this? Like, you had to, like, there had to be signs before she said, let's go all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there was definitely signs. And in, in, <clears throat> in this year, was there was kind of a, a symbolic workout, something that happened. I think we spoke about this for mm -hmm. um, during the, the quarterfinals. One of the workouts was the... It was 15.5 open workout. Mm -hmm. And that was my first time I had done the open. So I was a four-month-old CrossFit baby. Mm -hmm. And it was the last workout of the open. I did it, and I just destroyed everyone in the gym. Mm -hmm. I got, like, around eight minutes. Mm -hmm. early, the, as early as that, I was like, I do have a talent here. But I'm older. I have kids. So I'm not going to you know, chase mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. It's just... It's, just a novelty. This is my hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but then through the years, I just started getting more signs and more signs that it's like, hey, you know, I'm, I am good at this. I, I do have some sort of a talent. And me and her talked about it for a couple of years on and off. Like, hey, this is, you know, if you, if you want to really go after this, this is something you should do. You're, you know, you're never too old. You show the kids what's, what's happening. And then it was until I, we were coming up on my 40th birthday. And I said, Lynette, you know, some people want like trips and big occasions for the 40th I want to do something active that's just going to like kickstart my 40s and the, hey let's be healthy let's be active mm -hmm. let's do this and so she took that seriously mm -hmm. and that's when she reached out to Scott Panchik mm -hmm. so if you want yeah. to tell that yeah so I always saw the talent in him and it wasn't just CrossFit pretty much any athletic act activity that we embarked on like running um you know, basically, I can't really beat him on athletic stuff. So, you know, no matter what we were getting into at the time. So when he started CrossFit, I was like, you know, 
you know, you, yes, you're older than like these younger kids that are going after it, but it doesn't mean that you're done. So when he um, started getting more interested in like doing something special for his birthday that was fitness related, I was like, well, we, I can always get him some piece of equipment, but what about an experience? And I'm like, you know, we've always been followers of Scott and he's an Ohio guy. He's super humble. Like, obviously, you know how much we love him and his family. So I was like, I'll just like call and see if he's taking like clients because what if like he can do a, a personal training session? That would be really cool. And so that's how that started. And as I, as I came to your front door, I saw the bike out in the garage. The C2, the C2 bike. bike. Yes. Yes. The infamous C2 bike. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's right. That was yep. a Christmas present. That was the early one. Mm -hmm. So I want to I wanna backpedal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Were you doing things in the open that kept showing you I'm improving, I'm getting better at this? Was it just daily workouts at the gym? Oh, yeah. It was only it was, an hour a day. Yeah, just daily workouts at the gym. For, for the mm -hmm. first four years of CrossFit, I did the 5.15 a.m. class. And that was my crew, you know, mm -hmm. you know, when you do a class normally, you get to know those people really well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would do 515 class, uh, I go to work and, and, and that was, yeah, it was, it was the best part of my day, but it was just the start of my day. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I did. And, and yeah, did I do really good in class? Yeah, absolutely. But I never thought like, hey, I should start doing this more to get better at this skill. And all the skills just kind of came over the years, mm -hmm. you know. So... <laughs> This happened relatively fast because if for your 40th birthday, you get a, an experience with Scott Pancheck, you get your C2 bike, Yes. you win the CrossFit Games at the age of 40. Correct. Mm -hmm. So when was your birthday and how many months did, was that leading up to the Games? So we met with Scott the first weekend of January. Correct. Yes. That was, that was the first time we... And then the met Scott. Rudy turned forty the last day of January, January essentially 30th, January thirtieth. Yeah. And when we met Scott, we spent about twelve hours in total training over two days. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Rudy survived. Yeah. <laughs> he was barely hanging on at the end because I mean, truly, we only did like one hour a day, maybe some accessory yeah. on the weekends and stuff, but nothing more than that. Yeah. And um, I like. I think we've, we shared the story that Scott's like, if you are serious about going for the games, like you say it now and you commit to it. And we're like, okay, let's go. And on the way home, we had pages worth of notes. And we're like, okay, yeah. first thing we need to do is get a ski because that was another machine we didn't have. So um, we just started going little by little after the things that, we knew were gaps and um, the thing with us is like we take things very seriously and we yeah. pay attention to detail mm -hmm. and we were like you know if we're gonna do this we're gonna do do it all like yeah. we're not just gonna do half um, um, or take shortcuts so the open came about four weeks later four or five weeks yeah. later yeah and and he wins the first workout of the open we're like <laughs> Oh, well, or something's like, working. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally unexpected. Yeah. Like, we literally did the workout, drove to Kentucky, I think, or something for a meet. It was St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. And, for a and, gymnastics meet. Yeah, like, yeah. he did the workout as soon as it came out, Thursday night, and then got in the car, drove to St. Louis, and then we were just casually talking to people and then, like, checking the leaderboard. And we're like, oh, well, the good people haven't entered their score yet. And then... He wins. And I'm like, oh, well, your fitness is doing something yeah. good. Yeah. And yeah. so we just honestly kept focus on the task at hand, like the open. Yeah. <clears throat> and then quarters. And then Sammy's was like, oh, man, like this is, you know, this yeah. is it. And so. It was, it was a, I mean, it was like a classic just kind of Cinderella story, mm -hmm. really. I mean, I came into this thing with minimal experience, but I, I mean. But you put in the work. It, it was, my, my heart it was, was in it, and, and we just went after it, and, and just that much more, you know, volume and focus and, and mentorship from Scott mm -hmm. shot me up. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about the mentorship because it's twofold. You had Scott as an athletic mentor, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Lynette had him as a coaching mentor, mm -hmm. right? And so you're both like 
sponges around this man to get as much as you can. Absolutely. Yes. That's the best word to use. I want to ask Lynette, at what point did you say, I'm going to be his coach? Well, I don't think I had an option, really, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but, you know, so so back back to that initial 12 hours with Scott. I mean, just being able to sit back and, like, look at how Scott coaches I was like, whoa. Like, I mean, my brain was just overstimulated with information. Were you coaching already? Just like yes. class coaching? Yep. I had my L1 and I have been coaching for like about four years. And so seeing Scott took you to L8? Yes. 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 So I was just like, you know, I think in general, um, I, I mean, I had a really good base and I, and like the team at Chalk Dust is incredible so as I had ex I had exposure to really great coaches prior to Scott mm -hmm. so that really set me up for you know a really good start but then seeing Scott just you know you know poor you know like the recent documentary that came out about Scott like his sister nailed it he's a great athlete but he's an even better coach yeah. and I am so glad that that was said out loud because since I met him I felt the same way and I'm like, to top his athletic like resume is really hard, and he does it easily by how amazing of a coach he is. So yeah. when we came home, I'm like, okay, I, I remember a lot of what he said. I am going to put every single thing into practice. So I just became the, the coach. I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. learned so much, and I, you know, I got his Rudy's feedback, and it, it's a team effort, but... Um, being his coach was such a responsibility that I took with so much respect, yes. you know, like I, yes, we're married and we have a great relationship, but I also respect him as an athlete and I want this for him just as much. So I took yeah. that job very seriously. Yeah. In that first year, did you believe in him more than he believed in himself? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So where is that today? Well, I believe in him just as much, and he continues to <clears throat> exceed my expectations. So I just, like, I believe the same, I just have greater aspirations now. Yeah, and, and I think it's, I've built confidence over this past year, just when I learned that I can do things that I didn't think I was going to be able to do and it's it's cool to already be able to compare last year to this year and what I mean by that is it's, it's certain capacity of movements or even mm -hmm. you know comfort with certain movements where it's like wow I you know I, I wasn't able to do three legless rope climbs in a row and now I can't you mm -hmm. know it's like there's some growth there which is mm -hmm. it's the beauty of CrossFit for everyone you know the journey that they're on uh, but when you make those milestones and you keep progressing I, it builds my confidence mm -hmm. to where I believe it more. Mm -hmm. And we're we're both data nerds, as you know by now. And so <laughs> yeah. the fact we're we're wired actually very similarly. Scary. So we our brains grow confidence the same way. So same thing he described when he realizes he now can do three. I'm like, oh, for sure you can. And it's not that I'm trying to build you up with words. Mm -hmm. Remember, and then I pull up all the days that he's done multiple you know so yes. yeah it's it's a good back and forth Absolutely. Of, of building confidence for yeah. sure so outside sources are telling me that you are completely different in your own belief mm -hmm. this year to last year okay yeah I, I agree I am I, I there's before it was still a I wasn't sure if I belonged and I was like okay are these qualifiers that I'm doing are they just a fluke because everything's just lining up you know the plants aligning and I'm, I'm coming through um, and so even when we were training for the actual games in the summer it's like alright I'm going to do my best you know I'm not going to embarrass anyone I'm going to really put up a comp competitive fight and it wasn't even through halfway through the games that I realized oh I think I can win this thing and it was like it just set me on fire to where okay now my confidence is growing now I can now I know what I can do, and I still hope for the best. I don't. It's not like I have this expectation that I'm going to win everything, 
But at the same time, I have the confidence that I can, that I can win. That's it. Okay. say anything to me about it? He's in the top 10. He's in the top, top 6. He's in the 6th spot. <laughs> when the leaderboard came out, it wasn't long after that we realized that the wrong scoring table was being used. CrossFit had announced a week earlier that a new scoring table would be used because two of the workouts from this weekend were only going to be 50 points as opposed to the rest that were 100. This scoring table was using what was used in the open and quarterfinals where you're, the place that you took were the points that you get, meaning that the spread was going to be different and the weight of each event was not correct. Thanks to the quick and diligent work of Mike Halpin, who got a Google Doc out to the athletes with what the scores should have been, at least that gave them an idea of where they truly stood on the leaderboard going into the last two events. We're looking at test three, mm -hmm. and test three is an A and B. It is DT's little brother of mm -hmm. seven deadlifts, five cleans, three shoulder to overhead, and it is interval style with five intervals of two minutes on, one minute off. Mm -hmm. So a bit of strategy on that one too. I mean, intervals isn't new from a training perspective. Lots of athletes train that, train that all the time. So we are familiar with that, but on a competition setting, it's a little bit new. So um, kind of talking about how to pace, how to attack this one is going to be um, interesting. You don't want to burn out too soon and leave some reps on the table because you kind of went a little too aggressive from the start. So that's going to be important. I mean, that 185 barbell is going to get heavy quick. So making sure that we attack that one properly to ensure we stay consistent throughout those five rounds. But I do like that is power cleans versus hand cleans because I think it's a bit of an equalizer across the field um, for so smaller athletes. In my short time with you guys this season, um, Rudy is really good at recovery fast. Is that one minute enough? Yeah. Because of the part B being like a body weight movement, not a 225 pound snatch, <laughs> um, I feel like that recovery is pretty good. Also with that five minute window, in theory, I mean, we're hoping to get at least three attempts. So you know, I, I feel pretty good about having five minutes. And also, that was an event um, at Wadapalooza, so we do have some experience on kind of how how it felt. So it we feel pretty good about it. Okay. And then the Part B is the handstand hold. You have five minutes to establish a max freestanding handstand hold. Yeah, that, that's the event I was just referring to that was at Wadapalooza with the handstand hold. So... Five minutes um, seems like it should be enough for at least three attempts. So we're going to probably rest about a minute after that interval workout and then get upside down and see what he can do.
So now we're off to event three, and we're back at Chalk Dust, where Rudy's going to throw down.
Looking at the sky, Rudy. Oh, I'm stretching my neck, man. Oh. Didn't know if you were looking for help. <laughs> Going with those full cleans. That's a lot of hinging. Oh, Ooh, today must have got an extra bag of ice or something. I prayed for him because he So that was my first question. That was the biggest reaction of getting in the tub of the weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, was it the workout or more ice? Must have been more ice and maybe it was the workout. My abs just like fired out. It was weird. A lot okay. of sweat after that one, too. It was. It was a sweaty one, which I'm glad that we're going to go home, rehydrate, get a sleep in. That'll help recovery because... I think the legs will be, <laughs> the legs will be up. Yeah, and we, we, you got some legs tomorrow. Yes. So yes. what was, Squatting the setup. let's talk about the workout real quick. Uh, hardest part of the three, before yeah. of part A. So part A, I mean, the deadlifts got hard. So my back kind of tightened up a little. To just hold really good form, that's hard with the deadlifts. Um, and then uh, just, after finishing around, push, putting that third shoulder to overhead up, the hardest part, I'm grabbing that bar again and doing more, more, more. You get rewarded more reps the faster you go. That was the hardest part, honestly. Was it sneaky at all? Because you're you're known for recovering fast. Uh, as the as the intervals went, the minute rest seemed to get less. Yes, the the minute rest seemed to get less. Uh, it was, you know, I, I started getting sweaty. I was surprised how sweaty I was getting. <laughs> Cause it's like you get a rest, but no, that means I, I think my sweat glands wait till about four or five minutes. Then they just start kicking on and just flooding. Um, so I actually had to chalk the bar a little bit between my rest. Um, but yeah, the rest kept getting shorter and shorter. And, uh, but, but surprisingly, like it was hard, but it was what I expected, honestly. Okay. <laughs> DT-ish. And, DT-ish. and you, you stayed consistent throughout. Yes. Yes, I did. I was, I mean, every round I, I dropped maybe a rep or two from the prior lap, so it was good. So how dark did it feel? It got dark in the last round. The end of the fourth round, I had to ignore how bad it hurt. Like my body was saying, put the bar down, take a breath. I was like, no, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going. And then the fifth round was very uh, riding, riding momentum, riding the heart, just pushing through the pain. It was classic. It was, is that the first time you've gone dark this weekend? Um, no. So, the, let's see here. No, so what was this? The second workout. Choose your own adventure. Choose your own adventure. In, in that thruster portion, you had to go blank to keep picking up that bar. So, yeah, today. So, I had to do oh, that twice, twice today. today. Double win. And, and the barbell does that to you because with CrossFit, you're on the barbell a lot. That's like the classic thing, especially when you're trying to get better. And you can always do one more rep, no matter what the weight, no matter what you're doing. So you just do one more rep, and it's just, that's, yeah, you got to go down to do it. So <laughs> tomorrow's a little bit longer. Yes. Are you looking, are you glad it's a little bit longer? Because kind of too sprinty today. Very sprinty today, right? It's, it's yeah. interval, uh, which we do a lot in training. You know, that's kind of 
really popular right now. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow will be interesting because although it's a little longer, it's not because with it ending with burpee box jumps, that's the classic like, all right, anyone, <coughs> anyone can do this. How fast can you do this? And who wants it? And so that'll be a, a really dark conclusion to that workout. Yeah. When you're going into a workout knowing it's going to end with you going dark, um, do you relish that, or um, do you just know it's something you have to do to obtain your goal? It's it's something I, I know I have to do, and I have to do it, and I have to push through it, and and it's just you don't give yourself an option; you just rush right into it. Maybe take a deep breath. But it's just like, all right, it's go time. If I don't do this, I'm not going to accomplish what I've been working so hard for. So my last question is going to be a fun question. So music choices. <laughs> so it's been all over the map since I've been here for the Open and here yeah, yeah. from Metallica yes. to... Bad Bunny. Um, yeah, Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny. <laughs> so do you make a conscious effort in the music does it matter to you in a workout it does it does it matters to me um and it's it's fun because everyone in the gym like asked me because i had a playlist i made last year for all these workouts and everyone got used to them and they like were like oh that's the song of the year or whatever and so i made a new playlist in here so when, when the first open came out they're like oh do you have new music i'm like yes of course i have new music and so yeah it took a while to select songs that I like and I like to pull back from like our younger generation and, and even older and newer songs so yeah it's music's important because honestly I, I it takes my mind off and gives me a slight break but also I like the interaction with with the, with, with our community on the music and he has songs there from Liam and from Mason yes songs so that have significance have from both the kids yeah absolutely and Bad That's Bunny's great. there for me and Bad Bunny yeah <laughs> and when you're making the, the playlist, yeah. is it kind of a shut your mind off, not think about work, not think about training? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And I, I listen to it um, and just see how the songs flow from one to another, you know? And, and there's always ones that I will always put in every year that have significance. That I don't know if you noticed, but like when we were going to the handstand walk, I had Jason kick the song forward because I knew I the Tiger was next. And I know that gets me really going. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, all right, kick to that next song. I need... Maybe a little bit more juice. <laughs> so back to Scott. Um, he was your mentor. You guys, I'm sure, I, I've seen you text. I'm sure back at the initial part, it was a lot. How has, how has that relationship developed from almost a fan, like just trying to soak in as much as you could, yeah. to now being peers? Because Scott's competing on the same stage you are now. <laughs> mm hmm I would say yeah. I would say mm -hmm. our um, back to giving him credit for being such an amazing coach. I think when you take so much pride in your coaching abilities and your passion, there is nothing better than somebody that soaks in what you do and yeah. makes you proud. Mm -hmm. So I think that in itself was like like Scott at first was like these two interesting people came up and trained with me and like he's really good but like I sent him away with a list I don't know what they're gonna do I mean I'm sure like you know we were yeah. there like we just had met yeah and so then we don't like go anywhere like we we're, we're sticking with it and he he's like all right let's focus on our open and then quarters and now you're and I'm like wow you're going to the games Rudy like you did it and so I think that was kind of the the, the pivot moment where we were like, okay, well now, now what? Like, let, let's go, let's do this. Yeah. And so I remember um, at the games when we saw him, because he was Spencer's coach. And so we ran into him a few times and, and I, of course, texted with him about strategy <laughs> changer. <laughs> um, yeah, go. Um, I texted with him a lot about strategy and then he showed up to the final event and to another one too. Yeah. Um, and so they were invested. They were like, man, Rudy, Rudy's going to take this. And so it was such a, I don't know, it's just, it just came full circle. For progression of Rudy, you know, 
hidden milestones throughout the season, Scott's there witnessing like, hey, Rudy did this many things unbroken today, or he just did this one thing that he couldn't do before. So he's witnessing all these things via me giving him updates. Mm -hmm. And so he's replying back to me with like, man, Rudy, Rudy's really fit. You know, he needs to be confident. He needs to believe in his fitness. So all of these things that I would, you know, translate to Rudy and, and make sure that he knew what Scott was like communicating. Mm -hmm. So then back to August where he's wearing a burger shirt, sitting on the stands, cheering Rudy on, yeah. finishing his last yeah, event. I mean, how yeah. special is that? Yeah. So they, I had to go and like, you know, chase Rudy down after the finals, but both him and Kristen hung out with our, with our crew for like 20 minutes and like, him and his mom had a moment with them, like tears yeah. and just very special. So yeah. our entire crew loves the Panchicks. Like we're 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 Panchicks fans. Absolutely. Yes. So I want to talk about this year. At this point, you have qualified for the CrossFit Games. Yes. We gotta wait for the official word. Yeah. <laughs> you are getting to defend your title. Exactly. 16 months ago, could you have imagined that you'd be going back for the second straight year to defend a title? No. 16 months ago, I was, I was, I was trying to qualify for even semifinals, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, let's, let's go for semifinals. Then we get mm -hmm. semifinals. Like, let's go for the games. No, I couldn't imagine that I would tell you, yes, I'm, I'm trying to defend my title. I'm trying to return to get my championship. That's, mm -hmm. that's it's unreal. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's funny because you say Cinderella story, I think Rocky. Right? <laughs> right. Rocky wins, and then he's got to defend. Right. And there's more big, ugly, competitive people coming up, mm -hmm. ready to take you on. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Clubber Lang is in the, in the wings, oh, yeah. waiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Drago. <laughs> do, you, do you think you have put enough in to improve to be able to hold off uh, the competitors coming in and defend the title. Uh, yes, yes, I do, uh, because there's there's events that I wouldn't have done as good as I did this year, um, the years prior, and when that happens, that confidence is is, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a very big guy, and so you know when we met with Scott, it's like all right, my strengths are being an endurance athlete, so I gotta you know do really good in those types of movements. And it's more like, all right, the cross games are coming up. You can't really attack your weaknesses. You just got to get them sharp and, and just get them ready. And it was f for me to hit some bigger lifts, hit some bigger numbers that were close to these bigger guys. Mm -hmm. That's what just grew my confidence. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, I can do endurance, but guess what? I can lift him. Mm -hmm. I can move a barbell. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where that confidence grows. Mm -hmm. Well, you win the title with, with essentially no offseason. Correct. <laughs> right? Yeah. And now you get to defend the title with a full off season. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Does that, as, as data driven people, mm -hmm. does that give you more confidence because you have that full season, mm -hmm. a full plan in place? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was, you know, Lynette and, and Scott really developed, you know, what I was going to do on the off season to focus on those weaknesses. And when, you know, I started having events where, what was a weakness is now decent or good. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's mm -hmm. like, oh wow, I can do that now. <laughs> okay. And then test four is 20 burpee box jump overs, and then two rounds of 20 kettlebell step ups two rope climbs, two rounds of 20 get kettlebell goblet squats, two legless rope climbs, and then 20 burpee box jump overs. I, I personally kind of like this one. Like if I had to do any of these workouts myself, this would be the one I choose. <laughs> Maybe not the legless rope climbs. I would scale those, but I, I think it's varied enough that you can kind of just be aggressive overall. Um, we like burpees. The 20-inch 
step up and, and jump up is just a little different because, you know, the box is in a, in the, a different uh, dimension. So getting used to that cadence is going to take a little practice. Um, the kettlebell is interesting. Those two movements wouldn't have been ones that I honestly predicted. Um, not mad about it. I mean, it is what it is. It's a heavy kettlebell. So um, it's all about keep moving on that one and be aggressive, but also manage your breaks in a way that you're not staring at any movement for, for, for a long time. So, uh, pit crew, you've been here all weekend. Why, why does this mean so much to you guys? He's put in all the work. Yeah. He, there's nobody more deserving. Yeah. I mean, the man goes to work all day and trains. That's admirable. It's, uh, <clears throat> you know, all the effort that takes place you know, every day. You see it in the evenings, training with the man at weekends. Like, he just doesn't stop. So, it just makes you want to be there to support him every step along the way. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I'm building my resume. He's, he's like, he's like my best friend. We're going to use those up games <laughs> one of these days. Sure I don't know. And he's like the happiest guy. guy. He's yeah. like always like yeah. stuff to see you. It doesn't even matter like what day it is. He's got to take over. It's good. We're happy to be here. <laughs> so what, what kind of pride do you guys take in making it perfect? for So it's set up just right for him. And like, also. and then you, you weight changing crew, you're, you were rolling bars like you worked for Rogue for 10 years. Right. We're going for a job. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's their second career. Serial <laughs> business doesn't work out. And you can change plates for a while. Do you guys think about this stuff all week and try to make sure like you can be the, in the best position for Rudy? Yeah, I would say once the, uh, the workouts come out and yeah i've i've been around a few athletes and i would have to say this is the best set of crew right. in the business yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be one. we knew that already <laughs> So, Linda, how much do, do they take off your plate? A lot. I mean, you saw they were here before me today. We had to do a little extra mobility, and just since we're moving a little slow this morning, and the fact that they've had this already in motion, I mean, what, what more can I ask? And they already had scenarios thought out, like, like you guys have plan A's through F. Oh, yeah. It's like they have plans A through F. Yeah, totally. And then you just come in and say, yay or nay. Yep. So you're like the gladiator, like the thumbs yeah, up or the thumbs down. Thumbs up <laughs> yeah, I try to think like Rudy would think, and then I try to like, okay, have you thought of this, or is Rudy gonna be happy with the angle? Or... Yeah, nobody wants out just fine. Yeah. Four square. So do you guys have a toolkit ready for all of this? Like, yes. like phone stands, tape measures, tape. tape. Yep, it's all in its own bag, and it travels with the burgers. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> we need to get one like bedazzled for you. That's. I love that idea. Like, oh, custom, like. What's, what's the sense of pride for you guys and the community that comes out and supports and. Yeah. I mean, it's, he's one of our own. We do it for him, we do it for us. That's just kind of how we roll as a gym and a community. Yeah, I mean, I texted him earlier this week and was just like, it's just overwhelming to watch, you know, all these people that come into the gym 
uh, for his workouts and for everything. But like, I mean, they are, we are pouring our energy into him for as long as he's in this way, right? So like yeah. every workout, everyone is like laser focused on Rudy. Like they're just pouring energy, pouring energy, and like nobody wants him to do anything but just not me. And it's just, it's cool to watch. Like through your camera, you see it. Like, you're behind everybody and you're like watching all of their reactions as well as Rudy, but like the people behind him are just like, they're all in. And so what, what's the week leading up like? Is there a lot of thought that goes into like, how are we gonna schedule this? How are we gonna move equipment? We leave Do that pretty much up to Lynette and Rudy. Like, you know, like you tell us where you want us to go. Cause they've already been strategizing. They've already had the thought in their head. And we're just like, yeah, let's, whatever you want to do, oh let's God. do it. Uh, Cause it, I mean, it's, it's their, it's their gig, right? So, and they know what they want to do. So we're down for whatever they need. So the gym I go to, they close down on the weekends when things like this go down. Yeah. You guys don't close down. No. no. We canceled one class, I think, on Friday. Yeah. If, if they needed us to close multiple classes, I'm sure that we would have that discussion and make that happen. Um, but I don't even think they want that, you know? I think that the community, the community is here for them and they're here for the community. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't want to take that away from the community. No, I don't think so. Yes. So, and not that there's anything wrong with that, right? So, like right. everybody would totally be down, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just, a, it's like the coolest experience. And year two is even cooler. First year, we didn't know anything. We didn't know what we were up against, but this is just, I mean, we're almost like pros now, right? <laughs> and so what, what role, Mike, what role do you play during this stuff? You're really close to Rudy during the, the workouts. You're like the backup judge. I hear you like talking in his ear. Yeah. Um, support. I mean, that's basically my role with Rudy. Um, I support him through whatever he needs. Uh, I'll do some training with him and occasionally he's way more than I am. So it, I'll do what I can with him. Um, I give him lots of different technique, uh, specific things. Um, he gets real laser focus on his breathing. <laughs> Sometimes forgets about like head up, eyes down, like that kind of stuff, like knuckles down, um, just little things like that. But for the most part, I'm just supporting him in everything that he does. Um, trying to give him and Lynette the best opportunity that they can have and succeed. And Caitlin, you're a content creator. This gives you an opportunity to kind of do your thing. Yeah. Um, how excited do you get to do that over the weekend? Oh my God, I love it. This is like the, I love being a creative person. I do it for, you know, my job and I do it for the gym, but I just love documenting the journey of something. And then they can have that and we can have that forever. Um, I think it's very important to document you know the journey from 2014 we made a video I pulled all of my content from 14 until up until last year and made a video for them to have forever and it just showed this evolution of Rudy and Net and Jim and us and it's just so important to document all of these things uh, and and I love doing it and I keep getting like a little bit better every time so it's gratifying <laughs>
you're done. Final event, done. Um, how do you feel? I feel great. I feel really good. It was, it was last set of burpees, you know, it's kind of like a one final kick in the teeth, but I feel really good, yeah. So when you were warming up, I heard you guys talking about clearing the box. Yes. And I was like, what? And then that whole last set, you cleared the box. Why yeah. Why that strategy? It's it's faster. And you're it, it's at the end of the workout, you just, you find every ounce you have left, and it's just, it's just a little bit faster so you can get through those burpees really fast. I think my first set of burpees were 80 seconds, and then the last set was 65 seconds. So like that much faster, yeah. So with this workout, what was the crux? Do you think it was the legless and how fast you could get through that? So me, the, the, the crux was the legless in uh, forearm fatigue through all the, the, the um, kettlebell movements. Um, and, and I knew if I started to feel burning with those kettlebells, that I'd have to take strategic breaks just to shake up that grip so that when I went to the rope, I was confident that I could go up. <laughs> but hang on, yeah. So that goblet hold really did have an effect. Yeah, it did, absolutely. You, you wouldn't think, because you know we do workouts with, with double kettlebell 70s, but yet through those rep schemes and with the rope climbs and you you know, not taking real, real breaks, it built, built up. So I heard as we're coming in here, your first two workouts are validated. Yeah. How does that ease your mind? That ease my mind that like the scores are through, I know they're good. And you know, once that leaderboard comes up at four o'clock, we can be confident in my results that I won't drop any um, because score, score corrections rarely include improvements of score. So it's, it's typically when we go through video review, there's some people get dinged and they start dropping off that leaderboard. And, and Scott, you witnessed the preparation and the attention to detail that it takes because we hold him at a high standard because he holds himself at a high, himself at a high standard so we just work together to make sure that what we're going to submit is going to be good because we don't want any no reps and, and she no rep me yeah i know rep to notes. <laughs> she no rep one of those step ups does that um does that go back to what we talked about yesterday Trust. with with <laughs> <laughs> feedback yes. and forgetting it when you walk out the door. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Feedback and he actually and thanked me. I thank I thanked her for no wrecking me because that's. <laughs> well, your upset. mentor is Scott Panchek, and the Pancheks have been known forever for having the best standards in the sport. Absolutely, and that's in in just remembering that that's my mentor and in the integrity there makes us say, okay, if if we don't do a good rep, we're gonna no rep it and do it again. So I'm gonna ask you a word question now. Um, I've talked to some athletes who put on their games gear on days that they just don't feel it because it reminds them of what it's all about. I noticed final workout, full games gear. Oh. Was it to remind you why you're doing this and where you have to go to get there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I had my, for the four workouts, I had my outfit for today laid out first. I said, okay, this is what I'm going to wear. We're going black shirt, full games gear because... I earned those clothes and I want to earn them again. And it just it just reminds me of, you know, how when we went to the games, we absolutely treated it as a celebration of fitness. And that's exact absolutely what it was. Because you work so hard to get there and then you enjoy it and you celebrate. So having those clothes on just puts me in a mood that it's 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 undescribable. So just like Sunday Tiger, we now have Sunday Rudy. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Full games gear. It's time to get serious. It is. And, and when I was, you know, had, had trained with Scott and we talked about the games, you know, one of the things that he pointed out and a few other games athletes that I've talked to have said, you know, the last day of competition, the Sunday, whatever that day is. And when you go that last day, you want to be there. And that's why Sunday for me is as powerful as it is. So you started this journey a little bit later in life, right? Yeah. And yeah. these opportunities aren't grant, aren't given, right? No. And you don't know how long it's going to last. Absolutely, Scott. So your speech at the end with the appreciation for everybody, does that, does that resonate with, you, I, you don't know how many shots at this you have, and the appreciation of everybody supporting you through that? It absolutely does. And, and, and I'm grateful for them to come. And I don't take it for granted that, you know, most of those people, they've, they've come to all the qualifiers over the last two years, which is a lot of workouts, but every single one they come to, it, it means the most. 
It, it absolutely does. Yeah, this could be my last, you know, workout here trying to qualify for, for an event, and I want to make the most of it, and it just, it just makes it that much better. It, it, it's, it's memories that I'll always have. Well, I want to thank you again for letting me document this journey. Well, you're welcome. Um, it, it was a special weekend for me, watching you and Lynette and your interaction. <laughs> um, it, means, it means the world. You're, thank, thank you, Scott. I really appreciate you being here with us. Trust me, I recognize most of your voices. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that you're sharing your time with us and that sometimes I inspire you guys, but it's a cycle. Every one of you inspires me every day to push and to keep going. I don't look at that banner and think about the games. I look at that banner and think about all the times people have said, Rudy, I look at that banner and I push myself. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> 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 When the final scoreboard was released, Rudy Berger stood in second place and earned an official trip to the CrossFit Games to defend his title. I think Rudy would tell you along the way, it's great when you win the CrossFit Games. It's great when you do amazing things at competitions. It's great when you finish semifinals in second place. But none of this would be that important without the people in Rudy's life that have followed along the way. And I hope we have captured that in this documentary. All the people behind Rudy, especially his lovely wife, Lynette, and his coach, who pushes and loves him every step of the way. With that, thank you for joining us on Rudy and Lynette Berger, The Championship Couple here on Clydesdale Media. Thank you, God bless.